Hello and thanks for joining us on Africa Independent Television, AIT. Welcome to Democracy Today. I am Ijoma Osamu. Eighty-three days, which is about 12 weeks or three months, to February 16, a day scheduled for the 2019 presidential election in Nigeria. The 2019 general elections are fast approaching and political campaigns for the presidential election are in Tokyo as candidates mount the soapbox. Their major focus for now is how to win the election. Hence, they have embarked on a soapbox rhetoric to woo the electorate. On February 16, 2019, their strength will be displayed as electorate picks their preferred choice among the candidates who will preside over the affairs of the African most populous nation, Nigeria. The media, international and local, both on conventional and social media, are beaming their such light, even as the world's largest economies are showing more than mere interest on the 2019 elections in Nigeria. Now, the apex electoral body, INEC, had announced that 79 political parties fielded candidates for the polls, but that may not be the case, as about four political parties have withdrawn from the race, and more will withdraw before the end, or before the election day proper. But how well do you know these candidates, and uh, what different policies and programs are they bringing on table to better the lots of uh, Nigerians who are hungry for a better nation? What are the positions of infrastructure, health, education, eliminating poverty and unemployment, economy, agriculture, power, road, transportation, and most of all, security, etc., etc. Now, we will be looking at their policy documents tonight on the program, and we shall also find out from you, who are the electorate, what you expect from this candidate. Our focus tonight is on their policy document. Uh, we will take a look at some of them who have already released this policy document. We have experts in the studio uh, drawing from uh, the development uh, sector down to the economy and even legal who will be, join us to do uh, justice to this program. Tonight I have joining me in the studio uh, an election observer, a political analyst and somebody who also has uh, a pension in the Nigerian law and how things work. Leviston Weche, you're welcome to Democracy Today. Thank you and good evening to you. I have also with me uh, another economist. He's a political economist too. Uh, uh, Ayobami Oyelowo, you're welcome to Democracy Thank Today. Thank you. Good, good evening for having me. Yes, we will also have in the studio, who is already around, but will be joining us straight in the studio, a development uh, a columnist and a development expert, Jide Ojo. But before then, let's quickly take stories from across the state. Stay with us. We begin with a report from Kwara State where the People's Democratic Party has described as untrue the report that Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed is under pressure to withdraw from Kwara State senatorial race following the aftermath of last Saturday's by election in Ekiti, Okero, Essin, and Irekwodun federal constituency. In a statement signed by the state publicity the secretary of the party, Tunde Asheolu, the party urges members and its supporters to disregard the report saying that it was the handiwork of those they called unscrupulous elements. In Lagos states, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashila, says the Southwest has more to gain by re electing President Muhammad Bari in 2019 presidential election. Fashila insists the re election of Buhari will guarantee that power goes to the Southwest region in the year 2023. We promised change. But we did not promise that it would finish in four years. So it is a choice, and this is very important, this election is a choice between going forward to the next level or going backward to Isale. No, that's the choice. So go home and go and tell the people. This is the choice before them. Do you want to go forward? Because these roads have started. These transmission projects are on. The containers are out. Sura Market now has electricity uninterrupted. I tell you that. 
It is going to happen in Balogun Market. It is going to happen in Ikmori. It is going to happen in Dubai. 13,000 shops will get electricity in Sabungari Market. And in another development, the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Adams Oshomole, has filed a preliminary injunction to 10 billion naira suits instituted against him by the Benue State Governor, Samuel Autumn. A federal high court in Abuja on Friday dismissed a suit by Achinike Williams Wobodo and aid to the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amiji Aksen, the court to disqualify River State Governor Yesam Wiki from contesting in the 2019 governorship election on account of age declaration. The presiding judge, Justice Echo, therefore struck out the matter, awarding a cost of 50,000 naira in favor of Governor Wiki. The Federal High Court in Abuja also on the same day granted an order of perpetual injunction restraining the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from effecting its decision which bars the Zafra APC from fielding any candidates in 2019 general elections, having failed to conduct party primaries within the stipulated time. Yes, those are some reports coming from across the state and even right here in the RCT, uh, the Nigerian capital. Now, we will go straight to our discussion. We are looking at policy documents. What do Nigerians want from this candidate? Uh, most of them released their policy document on Sunday last week. That's on the 8th, the very day INEC um, uh, raised the flag for the launch of campaigns by political parties. President Muhammadu Buhari uh, held uh, something like a town hall meeting in the villa where he released his own policy document. And um, the PDP candidate the next day came up with his own policy document talking about Atiku Abubakar. And uh, since then, we've been seeing documents uh, from different political parties. So we got the one for uh, the, uh, the DPP and also got the one for other political parties. Today we will look at, uh, take a look at them. Let's look at this document. And uh, in some of them, you see similar things in them. But are these what Nigerians actually want? Let me first of all go straight to ask uh, uh, the development expert here who is seated by my side. Uh, let me ask, you have seen the policy document of uh, some of these candidates. What, yeah. what do you make out of it? Yeah, welcome development. It's, uh, it's not unusual for policy documents to be released during the campaign period. And um, it, um, it's taking, I think many more candidates are taking that serious, that they need to go beyond the uh, gathering and dancing and, you know, shouting party slogans and then asking people, just vote for us will better your lives and then dispersing. Now people are being asked to be held to certain you know commitments that they have made in their policy documents. Uh, we saw the incumbent in the lead up to 2015 mm. releasing a similar document. Uh, we also saw the former uh, president Good Lord Jonathan also uh, releasing a uh, documents then. And the, the good thing is that Efforts are now being made by civil society to document and archive some of these promises and take on the you know, uh, successful candidates after they have been inaugurated. You recall that if you go online, you'll see what is called Buari Meter, yeah. uh, which is an initiative of Center for Democracy and Development. That was after uh, the 2015 after election. After the 2015 election, and Buari won. They archived <coughs> everything he said, the 222 uh, promises allegedly made, and they have been tracking the uh, you know uh, implementation. Uh, many of them are still in the works, and only about seven allegedly have been uh, achieved. Of course, many of them were not rated. So that's to tell you that something similar can also happen at lower level, at subnational level, where uh, governorship candidates' uh, promises can be uh, documented and you know. Uh, they, they them being asked about how far they have gone with the implementations six months, one year after they have come into power. But Ijoma is not the problem. Releasing policy documents is not a problem. It's implementation. The implementation comes 
the challenge comes when they start telling us six months, one year into their new administration, that oh, they never knew the rot was this bad. Mm. They never knew it was this, you know, situ situation was this uh, deplorable. Recall that in 2000, and 2000 or thereabout, when the late Bola Ege was uh, Minister for Power, uh, he promised that within six months he was going to turn stones to bread you know, by making sure that power electricity is available to all and sundry. But when he was asked why he couldn't meet those expectations, he said he never knew the road was very deep. And since then, we have continued to be in that road. Every administration that comes in promises you know, additional 10,000, 20,000 megawatts, megawatts. In, four, in four years. But they never achieved even 1,000. Mm. Those who <coughs> have managed to achieve 1,000 will tell you they've now achieved uh, generation has now got to X amount, but distribution is still at Y level. So our generation and distribution has not matched. Transmission is still weak. So, so the, the point is that there is always a ready alibi why many of these promises never get implemented. Okay. And uh, Ayobami, we, we, we have seen uh, government come government school with different promises. And this time, I am happy that what we are seeing now is so good, just like the INEC chairman says during the week, that the campaign started in a very good foot because these candidates are coming out to tell Nigerians, this is my document, you can hold me accountable uh, with it. But it seems that what they have is tinting towards the same. Are these uh, people putting uh, Nigerians first? No, you, you will have to be realistic that um, because Nigeria have similar problems. So their document will always have similar similarity. Because if the problems are the same thing in the same country, there is likelihood that people will propose towards the same problem. What the difference will now be is what is your plan to achieving set goals. For instance, I was watching another T V program where the spokesperson for the Atiku campaign, Shoumi, was being asked about them, uh, specific plans for railway system. And the, the only problem was that in that document, why they, they, they agreed that we have issues with railway problems, he was talking about, uh, the, the, the anchor was asking, where specifically do you plan to, 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 link, to link up railway lines? He was now saying it's voluminous. I don't want to go and defend him in that area, but those are some of the shortcomings in, in those documents. Implementation. Implementation. You see, like he rightly said, we've never been short of good documents. We've never been short of good plans. But the difference now will be what exactly are your plans? Okay, we have identified X, Y, Z as our problem. Everybody, we're all Nigerians. We all know what the problems are. Now, the, 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 the person I'm going to take seriously is the person who will trust me. This is the problem. These are the solutions, and this is how I intend to. You can't just wake up and say, oh, I will move 50 million people out of poverty. How do you intend to do that? You want to employ everybody in civil service? We all know it's not going to work that way. So when you give us promises, you have to tell us, these are the things I intend to do to achieve this X, Y, Z that mm -hmm. I have promised. So, those are the areas we need to hold uh, these candidates to account. Okay. When they make promise, they have to tell us exactly what the plans are. The time frame. And how they're going to do it. And exactly. And there should be some time frame to everything because you can't just give us a general problem. They already, at least for the PDP, the man said they need six years to achieve what you Just you like I heard um, uh, mm -hmm. the Minister of Power just now uh, yeah. saying that uh, we promised you change, but we never told you that we will bring change in four years. Four years, yes. Uh, I was with the Minister of Power uh, a few days ago. He was talking about his, uh, the achievement, and you must give it to him. The man knows what he was talking about. He said clearly that uh, they have um, moved uh, uh, the megawatt that we have from 4,000 that they inherited to 7,000. Uh, yes, it may not be the most fantastic figure. Is but it visible? Do, to say it is visible for, for and he, he was, uh, he, somebody asked him that question and he said, well, we, are, we can't cover everywhere immediately. Be, but in my area, I must be sincere. Where I live, I have seen the difference compared to where it was two, three years ago. The amount I spend on my generator has drastically 
drastically. But it so seems, it seems, the, the it seems people it, concentrate more on Abuja because I received Well, I, I was living in Abuja too. I had that problem. So you see, you have to, if the problem is like this and the man is here, you have to spread out. You start somewhere. You start from, you start from somewhere. the center. You start from where you are. <laughs> so for me, I, I have seen difference. And honestly, I was in my house in Lagos too. Um, over the weekend, before I came into Abuja, just on, on Wednesday, I, I could tell you clearly that even in my house, there have been a lot of uh, improvement. Used to be just during the rainy season there, but it's not. It's no longer raining, and I can still see improvement. I'm not saying we are there, but I'm just saying that I if you give us these promises, you have to tell us when you're going to fix it. And if we have uh, seven thousand right now, and transmission, according to him, has hit about five thousand, they're about. And they are also working on off-grid plants, small grid for universities, for markets. So if these things are done, I've, and, and those are the things I've always said, we cannot all put everything on the grid. We have to look at off-grid systems. So if they are doing it, then I think it's a good idea. Anyway, so I'll, I'll that's for, because you mentioned power, that's mm, what we are talking about. Yes. Because I actually had a, an hour discussion with the man, and those are the things I brought out of it. And we talked about road and other things too. So if somebody is saying I want to do rail, you have to tell me which particular rail you want to do. How do you intend to fund the rails? Because the truth is, Nigeria don't have money to fund everything. So if you're going to borrow, what is the borrowing plans? And so and so forth. So you have to tell people clearly. You can't come and just lie to Nigeria and say, I will create 50 million jobs. How do you want to do it? You will drop jobs from heaven. It is when, you, when, the rail, when the rail works, the rail works then jobs automatically will be created by itself. And then you now begin to bring in the, the, the uh, private sector in, into it. Okay. I mean, looking at it, you cannot have a good economy when there's no linkage between cities. If you travel on our road, you will see trucks broken down, tomatoes rotting in the way, food items rotting away. So those are some of the areas we need to address. When you address infrastructural deficit, then you begin to deal with many of our problems. As okay. As well. Now, um, Livingstone, this this will be the fifth or probably the sixth um, presidential election in this fourth republic. And uh, uh, you have uh, witnessed since 1999 how politicians come up with documents. Uh, the, the, some people call it rhetoric because um, uh, what Nigerians are saying is that we, we, we are not feeling it. So how, what is the difference? What difference are we expecting as Nigerian? I'm a Nigerian. To me, I know what I want from this person. A proud one. Yes, a proud, a proud one. one. I'm a proud one. <laughs> <laughs> so what is what difference do you, are you expecting from this document that will satisfy, not fully, at least take Nigerians to a particular uh, uh, position that they want? Well, number one, we are not here to condemn these documents because um, some of us have perused uh, through some of them. And... Uh, Mainly, it's to look at uh, gray areas that they have touched. Even though I, as a person, would expect that um, the citizens should set the agenda for what these politicians or whatever problems they would seek to solve, so that we move beyond the politics of them coming to tell us, I told you I will give you five naira per day, and I kept that promise. After all, it was five naira that I promised. So we have to um, step up and up the game. Now, what are the contents of these documents? Very laudable ideas. I've held the opinion that these ideas as represented in these documents are as ambitious as, as, even the, the, as, as, as the ambitions of the candidates, exactly. <laughs> so they are just ambitious ideas. But the shortcoming of most of the documents is the fact that there is no blueprint as to how these problems will be solved. We have the, 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 the politics of Nigeria is going beyond forensic eloquence, where somebody comes to sound very correct, politically right, and, and uh, puts up a document that is like an essay, where the dots are where they should be, the commas are where they should be, and so on. But to give us practical and convincing, verifiable steps on how, so that it can show your level of competence mm for governance, your level of readiness for governance. Unfortunately, again, most parties have not even presented their documents. And are you, are you also aware that you will scarcely find the manifestos of virtually all the political parties anywhere right now? 
So what's you the difference you between you the, can't, the, the policy document of a candidate of a party and the manifesto? I remember what happened in 2014. There is a, there is a thin line. Livingstone, I remember yes. in 2014, uh, after elections, uh, we, 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 we saw reality. Yes. Those who won became governed. They were governing. Yes. And uh, we also heard statements like, that's not my promise. It's their promise. No, no. So what's you the difference between you know, their document it, and the party it manifesto? Became, it, it's a problem where the candidate later says, I never said so. Yes. But their handlers go ahead to say these things. So the issue now will be, who do we take? Who do we believe? So more, we will hold the principal accountable from, you know, the promises he'll be making. Now, the, 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 the document themselves come to play at this point, where we're asking questions, how they arrived at these items they have identified as problems. Are these indeed the problems of Nigeria? Take the economy, for instance. A very high percentage of Nigerians will tell you that the economic uh, landscape of Nigeria or the economy landscape of Nigeria does not welcome new entrants. It is tailored towards favoring a few, and that's why you have entrepreneurship dying every day. I did cite an instance of a UN report of 1990, of 2017 rather, that, re that, that repeated that from 1990 till 2013, 35 million Nigerians were added into the poverty population in addition to the already existing 51 million, mm -hmm. making it 81, or, uh, making it about uh, 86 or so. That as at today, it's well over 100. That is because of a period, it's not about the Buhari administration, it's something that has evolved over the period. Mm. A, a, an endemic incompetence among the political elite class. Mm. And that same class of politicians have continued to hold sway and cross carpet among the various parties. So there is this challenge of competence of leaders. Anybody can write these documents and, you know, put out there. But I would suggest that this Nigerians should begin to look at the candidates and interrogate their capacities interrogate their, their antecedents and interrogate their profiles. Whatever they have pledged to do, Nigerians should begin to look beyond party lines hmm. and look at, because in power, you are neither A or B party. You are the person in power who holds sway, who calls the shots. Again, one of the challenges I think have not been well represented are some of the constitutional disputations that have pervaded the Nigerian political landscape. There are issues of restructuring. There are arguments as to whether the constitution of Nigeria is acceptable to Nigerians or not. We want to know, put each individual candidate on a map and decide where they stand. If you raise the issue of IPOP, for instance, what is the stance of a Donald Duke, a Buhari, a, an Atiku, a, a Mogalu, and the rest of them on IPOP? Will you support the agitations or do you think the agitations are genuine enough? What will you do about their matter? Should it come up in your reign as president? Will you prescribe president? them? Will you prescribe them? Do you hold them as terrorists? That's on one hand. What is your opinion concerning Nigeria's constitution? Some hold the opinion that Nigeria's constitution is a military document handed down to us in 1999. Do you believe that? Because others have argued, intellectual documents are there to show, arguing that the Nigerian, docu the Nigerian constitution gives protection for impunity by vesting immunity on certain political office holders. So if you begin to perpetuate impunity, immunity protects you from being called to justice. So what is your opinion? Do you think this document represents the yearnings and aspiration of Nigerians? And second, thirdly, what, is, what will be your position on devolution of powers? What will be your position on resource control, on land ownership? and the rest of them. We want to know where these people stand because in very developed society, we watched the American election yeah. debates mm. and the rest of them. We saw a Trump saying bluntly he's anti-gay. So we want to know bluntly where you stand on these issues. Don't just hide under the guise of um, uh, insecurity, uh, employment, and Econ so on. Economic growth. And so there is, a f there, there, is, there is a fundamental defect in the way Nigeria is structured. And that's why I've held the opinion that it goes beyond who is the leader, who is the president. Nigeria's problem is a systems problem. Whoever comes in there is almost swallowed up. And for us to unwind from this systemic problem, there are basic issues we are going to be facing. Another issue that comes to mind 
the ninety nine constitution says Nigeria's union is non negotiable, non -negotiable. It's indissoluble. As a president, do you hold this opinion to be so in the face of the contestation against the nineteen ninety nine constitution? We want to know clearly because these are basic issues that will be informing their policy direction. Because the 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 the, 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 the challenge with a policy document is that that will be the document that will be guiding the policy direction of that particular administration should it come into power. So it's, but, but it, it's, it's important. Livingstone, yes. does, does it mean that, but you know that this document yes. is not a document that you take to court if they don't fulfill it. Right, that, is, that is the question with the Constitution. Chapter 2 of 1999 Constitution, titled Fundamental Objectives and Directive Principles of State Policy, pointed out clearly that the government shall provide education security, health, shelter, and so, so on. So why do we clap but for them? the when bottom they line that? is that it went ahead to say that you cannot go to court to enforce those provisions of the Constitution. That is the only provision in 99 Constitution that you cannot, it is not justiciable, you can't go to court to enforce. So it is very strange that a leader may hold these as promises, but he will not be bound to implement. To implement. So it will be at his behest, it will be at his discretion, as to whether or not this promise is mind you, in law, every contract is an agreement, but not every agreement is a contract. This is a mere social contract, which of course will motivate their policy direction. But we want to come to a point where we can go to court to, to, to enforce or there should be a measure of uh, bindingness uh, uh, all right, uh, of this document. All right, Livingstone, we'll still come to you but because uh, we have we have other guests. If I give you opportunity, we'll take over my show and I won't allow you to do that. <laughs> it's already done half of this. <laughs> uh, uh, no, let's, let me come to you. You are a development expert. I was just reading through the uh, portion of the article document and uh, the Buhari document. Now, the, pres the president, President Muhammadu Buhari, is saying that his new policy is inched on his belief that he has completed Nigeria's uh, fundamental work. Then, where he is moving to now is taking where he has, uh, what he has done to the next level. Article, an article document is saying, promises that um, it will have to make or build a broad-based, dynamic, and competitive economy because he has the belief that Nigeria economy is not stable. Like he said, we cannot hold these people going by what he said. Now, if we can't hold them or take them to court when they don't fulfill some of these promises, where is the faith of the electorate? What will the electorate do? Because the expectation now is not for somebody to come today to say, I will fix this road, when they know it is your duty as a government to fix the road. Because mm -hmm. I am a taxpayer. So you don't come on TV to celebrate because you are, you are building a road and expect me to clap for you that you're working. So what are, they, what are the ex uh, electorate expecting from these people? We are expecting better governance. Um, before... before interrogating what you just said i think something needs to be done and done differently from what we did in 2015. a lot of pronouncements are being made which is not or which are not in the documents that have been released by the two candidates yes. we do not want a scenario of 2015 where the incumbent will start dissociating that it's my party, it's my campaign organization, not me. Mm. Do you understand? Whatever they are not at, uh, uh, that they are... The both parties uh, involved, the interest group. The various interest groups are not in consonance with. with. They should debunk it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. lash on it. Don't, don't use it to come to power yes. and then start telling us, oh, th 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 that wasn't me. Go look at my own document. I promise only five things. Yeah. When, when Jonathan was there, he said transformation agenda. We know the seven transformation agenda. Now, Buhari is saying next level. We have seen the documents, but we have also had his ministers, his uh, campaign organizations making contrary promises. Okay, their own promises. No. It is important for the campaign organizations or the candidates themselves to issue rebuttal over 
whatever they do not believe in. Recall the issue of devolution of power. Today, APC is saying it was a party decision. It wasn't Buaris. And that is why it took the APC three and a half years or three years to set up a National Rural Committee to define the parameters of what the party means as devolution of power. They have defined it. They have launched or presented the document, but since February, it's gathering dust. And today you see the president saying, I don't believe restructuring is our challenge. The vice president say, I believe in state police. So what I'm saying is that there is need for harmonization of thoughts. Mm. Whatever you do not intend to do, don't, don't take it because of its, you know, utility value to get you votes. After which you now start saying, no, 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 I didn't make those promises. Two, can we benchmark the manifesto of the party mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the, policy, the document policy document of the candidates? Why am I saying this? In law today, when you cast your ballot, you are casting for the party, mm. not the candidate. Exactly. You are voting for the party, not the candidate. And anything can happen. And anything can happen. So, if the manifesto of the party is at variance to that of the campaign organization, because now they are running independent campaign, campaign organizations, organizations. Yes. which should not really be. The party is supposed to take exactly. a decision. Exactly. The party is supposed to be the one at the forefront to say, this is our candidate, because that's what they call sponsorship. Yes, it's there in, in the electoral The sponsorship act. should not be just forwarding my name. Or just conducting party primaries and then awarding tickets to who I feel like. Not even who won the primary. Taking responsibility. You have to take responsibility. Because every political party has a manifesto with INEC. Mm -hmm. Likewise, it's constitution. Now, can we start auditing the manifesto and, and the campaign promises they are making now? Are they at variance or they are in sync? If there are variants, can we have sessions where we will try to harmonize so that we, whatever they want to deny, let them deny now. Whatever they want to hone up to, let them hone up to it. I like what your station is doing. You have started meeting the candidates. Mm. And I saw yesterday, I watched Shore and the other two candidates, Buari and the um, uh, engineer, uh, the other person. Yes. No. If each of the political parties have their own manifesto, can they supply us a copy? And then their own campaign documents. And then let's see whether they are together or they are at variance. Whatever, if we don't do this, the excuses, the lame excuses, the alibi that they will give it's already made. Mm, just like we heard it before. <laughs> it's already made. So that's what I want us to run away from. And you know what? I agree with Livingstone on one count. Even if you don't release any policy documents, your work is cut out for you. The, a primary six puppy can write the challenges of Nigeria. Of Nigeria. <laughs> a primary six who is sound mentally will tell you we don't have light, we don't have water, we don't have X, Y, Z. Health now, the, the only thing that these people are promising is that they are putting figures on it. They are telling you, uh, one is saying, I will, I will, I will, I will give, uh, I will make, I will, uh, 15 million jobs, 15 million million jobs, jobs in four years. Yes. Another one is saying 50. 3 million jobs for every year from the private sector. So, you see that what they are just icing on the cake is putting figures. I will build roads. So I will build X number of roads. But what many of them are ceased to do. See, for me, Ijoma, governance is not a rocket science if there is transparency and accountability. Where they have problems majorly is because they are not transparent and they don't want to be accountable. Now, now let me ask you this. Because if they come out to say, I will build road, I will provide power, mm. I will do this and I will do that, what is your duty 
as a candidate or as somebody who is at the hands of affairs of a particular government to the people? Is, that, is it not spelled out that these are the basic things that these people need? What different No, no, no. The, the difference will be in the modus operandi of how they want to do it. I may want to build road. I know that the government resources is very paltry. I may choose to say I will do 1,000 kilometers of road through build, operate, and transfer. Mm. That's a model. It could be through PPP, public private, private partnership. partnership yes. It may be hundred percent funding from government. Those are three different models. So that's what I want to hear from them. Mm. I, I want to hear what model are you? You want to create jobs? What model are you going to use in creating this job? Who is going to drive the job creation? Because is it the private me, sector? Uh, thing? Is it the private sector led or public sector led, or is it a big store of the two? Because for me, even when you when you clamor that you are going to create jobs. I don't take you serious until when I see you marching to solve the energy problem of this country. Without adequate, affordable, uninterrupted power supply, all the job pressure rhetorics will remain a rhetoric. Because with public power supply, affordable and constant power supply, even without releasing any public document, Ijoma, you will find something to do. Mm -hmm. I will find something to do. The market men and women, the prices of goods and services will come down if you are able to solve the energy challenge. Look, the issue of uh, oil and gas, we are, I mean, I think I said that we will partially privatize uh, NNPC and we'll sell off the... the that, that's even where I'm going to now. And that, that for me, and with him on that count, I, a lot of Nigeria may not agree with him. But you see... Was it Jonathan that wanted to sell off these refineries in the first place? They said, oh, Nigerian Labour Congress said, no, no, don't touch it. It's our patrimony. No, no, let's, let, let, but we didn't sell. Now, five years down the line, it still has remained a drain pipe. So many millions of dollars spent on turnaround maintenance, and we are not getting more than 10, 20 percent, you know, refining. We are still importing, we are still paying subsidy, we are still doing under recovery because the need for has not been done about this this refineries. Mm. Well, um, I, I thank you. It's good to know that you are still there. The program is Democracy Today. You can go to our social media platform, like we said earlier on the program, that we will make it open uh, for you to participate. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask. I have experts in the studio here, economists. <laughs> so I'm so lo lucky and blessed. You can go to our, the, our Facebook page, like our page, or drop a comment there at Democracy Today. Go to our Twitter handle, follow us at our Twitter handle at democracy number two day with a double y or follow me on my handle at ej or samo we are still looking at the policy document of uh, this candidate and uh, like we earlier promised on our twitter handles and our social media that we'll be bringing two uh, presidential candidates but that didn't happen today hopefully you will have uh, this presidential candidate will have their time to appear on ait and tell you what they have for you but this moment let us um, uh, continue what we are doing uh, yes i would just use this moment to say a Apologies for not uh, bringing your candidates because a lot of you have been expecting that we will see this candidate on set today. We sincerely apologize. Uh, it was um, some circumstances beyond our control. Ayobami, if you look at the policy documents now, let's, for instance, take um, this privatization issue because I have seen in some uh, reports, some statements that some, some candidates are saying we will sell off NMPC. That's what they're using it for. But when I saw the document, it talked about privatizing NMPC. And I remember the former CBN governor then, when he became the enemy of Kanu, he made a statement, if we don't kill NMPC, NMPC will kill us. So do, are you one of those that are saying that idea may not be too good for Nigeria? Well, <clears throat> you see, when we use the word privatization, it makes it look very... Um, endearing and nice but you have to ask yourself what are we privatizing who are we selling to we privatize electricity um, most of the people that bought the power companies where we we don't I don't have to say much here 
the result is there for everybody to see. Do they have the capacity? We privatize NITEL. We privatize uh, Nigeria Airways and so on and so forth. As of today, they just, some of them, some of the people that were laid off because of that action, they just got their pension. A few weeks ago, they just started getting paid. Which means privatization is a good idea, no doubt about it. But how well thought out is this privatization? Are you going to sell it at the correct value to people with the right capacity? Or you just give it to your cronies and your friends? hijack government property we I, I can't remember the particular one that was there was one that was sold at so ridiculously low a price less than 10 percent of the original value that that hurts so privatization is good when you understand what you want to do about it when you know the people you are selling to when you're selling at the right capacity i mean at the right amount to people who have the correct capacity so uh why the presidential candidate of the of the PDP said he want to privatize MP NMPC? It's not a bad idea. Petrobras of Brazil is was created as, uh, around the same time when we created NMPC. It's a private company. It is doing well. They pay tax to government, and government is making good money, and it's not bad. But when you look at the uh, the issues behind this privatization, because he was in government when the original privatization started, and there have been a lot of allegations to the fact that he. Uh, uh, enriched himself and his cronies. How true that is, I don't know. Yeah, but I like the but, statement allegation. Uh -huh. So that is why when you hear privatization, some of us are skeptical. Mm. Not because it is not good. I am an economist. I'm a development economist. And I understand that it is good to privatize government corporation, especially when the way NMPC has been run over years. Nobody will say don't privatize NMPC. Mm -hmm. It is the right thing to do. But the problem you're going to ask yourself is, how do you want to do it? The person will promise you a shirt. What exactly is he wearing himself? So he's those naked. are the areas. He's naked. Uh -huh. So those are the areas you want to look at. So we don't want a privatization that you will sell at uh, one one or ten percent of the uh, correct amount to, to your, your friends and cronies, and then we are back to where we are. I mean, some people went into agreement with uh, uh, Virgin Atlantic, Atlantic to create Virgin Nigeria. We all know the story where it ended today. Nigeria lost billions of dollars in that nonsense transaction. As we speak today, nobody has been taken to court. A Jefferson issue happened under that kind of situation. We all know the what happened. The guy who is called Jefferson is in jail today. The other man who was alleged to be his partner wants to be a president. We all know the issue of the uh, Malabu oh. oil. So when people say pressure on Nigeria, you are always very... I, 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 when I, the moment I hear market forces in Nigeria, I'm just scared. Because when you hear market forces, you just know somebody will see that. Okay, look at the price of cement, for instance. Oh, we say market forces will work. But some people sit down there and they're ensuring, ensuring that the, 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 the price of cement keeps going up, up and up and up and up. It has never come down. Mm -hmm. So who is the market force? Nigeria is not a normal situation as it were. But do, do we remain in this when you know that a no, lot of... That, lot is of why, that is why we must have what you call discipline. Okay. See, the indiscipline in Nigeria is pervasive. And I will explain. I was in this your studio with one man one day. It was long ago. We were talking about rice. And this man was so angry. He said, they have a rice farm somewhere in Niger State. And when they harvested and milled the rice, and they were taking it to, I think, Kano or Kazina, I can't remember the exact state, they were hijacked by the marketers. And they, 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 they took all the trucks by force. That you can't take this rice there. Because they want to go and sell at 12,000 naira. Cheaper. Exactly. And, and the people have made up their mind that, that as at that time, rice must be, I can't remember the 20. price, around 20 something thousand yes. there. It was in this your studio, one of the Kakaki programs. I was there, I was, I was the guest. And the man was angry. So they hijacked them and said, you cannot sell at this kind of price you want to sell. Don't bring your rice to our town, we don't want it. So when you say market forces, you are talking about a country where people follow the law, where they do the right. So one of the first things that Nigeria needs now is situation where we will be, we'll be disciplined, we'll be normal, human. we are too abnormal. I don't understand us. I honestly don't But we need to start us. somewhere. Okay, I'll give you an example why I say we're abnormal. I was in Heathrow 
We were all queuing up to, to, to go on the plane to do the right thing. And the same us got down at Mojala Mohammed Airport in Lagos. And, we didn't and I didn't believe that the same human beings that I was in Heathrow with six hours ago <laughs> are the same people I'm in Lagos with. The difference was so clear. Nobody was willing to do the right thing. Everybody was dumping queue. People were behaving badly. Mm. So we, we, we need self-inculcation. We need to inculcate in ourselves that discipline. Because it is easy to sit down here and blame our leaders. But I was driving two weeks ago on Jabi Road. And some guy finished eating inside his keke nape. He was a passenger. And the guy took the food pack and dumped it right in the middle of the road. Mm. I had to drive and overtook him. And I was telling him, are you actually very sick? Because what do you expect to come and pack the plate that you dump on the road? That is who we are. So when you say privatization, you say uh, market forces, when you, and then you now mention Nigeria, I'm very worried. Because whatever works in every place is, bring it here. I don't know. We just have a way of making things not to work. So it is a problem that we need to deal with ourselves. Our own change must start from ourselves. Because when we don't do the right thing, you don't expect those people at the top there to do the right thing. Because they are not different from us. They are not caught from heaven. They are part of us. But they, we, like we, us. But, but they are like mirror that the people look up to. Well, that is why I am saying that when the person says you want to do privatization of NMPC, me, I'm, I'm afraid. It's that simple for me. <laughs> okay, Ayobami. Now, Living Stone, he, he, he has said it all. But, but, both of them men mentioned it. Points they gave are very apt. Now, we're looking at uh, a future, a Nigeria with a future where the people will take a decision for those who are in power. He talked about privatization. Very laudable, good one. But the fear is, who are you selling to? Is it no time for the people to stand and say, we want to know who you want to privatize this NMPC to and scrutinize no, no, them. Those are not, I don't think that's the problem who you're selling to. Okay. <clears throat> because, um, of course, you will not sell to ghosts. You sell to human beings. You sell to human beings. But how credible are they? Well, you know, this is campaign. Capacity. This hmm. is campaign. So people of different political affiliations will give narratives and interpretations in different forms. Okay. But the bottom line is this. I think the Nigerian state has been more involved in both administration and oppression rather than being more involved in administration and allow, allow the private sector engage themselves with operations. And government has never been a good businessman. He gave an instance yeah, of Brazil. Brazil. Exactly. So, it, Brazil. exactly. Yeah. so there are different instances where even in the U.S., where Donald Trump came on board from his background as a business person, began a policy where American companies that manufacture abroad and bring products back home must come back home and manufacture to employ people in the manufacturing sector, or they will up the taxes and they will find it impossible to sell their goods in America, because America should not be taken for a ride as a dump site where you produce and bring finished products back home. So it's a question of policy and then operations. So what I suggest is that government has to find a way to uh, demobilize itself from the daily runnings of the economic sector. To give it to the, the private sector. You must do that, because entrepreneurship is, comes to play here. That is one area that has transformed the, uh, the, the, you call it the Asian Tigers of this world, you call it the Middle East and the rest of them, is entrepreneurship. There was this story about Japan when they came out from the, is it the Hiroshima incident? Mm. So they had to hire an American, uh, some American experts to come and teach them about the economy and how to develop. And one area they worked on so much was entrepreneurship development and Japan, the, the Japanese citizens were so engaged and involved, and that was what revolutionized the Japan's economy. So the, an area that is germane here is not about promising 30 billion jobs for human beings that you're not interested in, but in creating the enabling environment. That's why I was even going What to... is important to me is that I do business, never minding who is my president. In as much as I should care about who my president becomes, but I should not function as a citizen with the fear that because this person is a president, he may tamper with my business. And that's why an, a Donald Trump can issue a travel ban and the court will reverse that, that order. He will issue an executive order and the court will reverse it because it goes beyond his, his, his personal uh, interest and motives. Donald Trump is my man. But what you find in America is an, a, a manifest demonstration of strong institutions of states. Yeah. 
which will lack in this climb. Strong institutions of states, because no matter how laudable these policy, policy documents, documents are, our, our institutions are so weak. That's why Africa is not moving forward. The Pan-African Parliament, for instance, is called Parliament, but is not empowered to make laws. It's only advisory. It's only an advisory council. It, it has been restricted to that by the article establishing it. So the institutions of the Nigerian states have become so uh, disabled that they are not even empowered to call power to order. That is what they are supposed to be doing. It goes so, so that, such that when you come up with a policy that runs across purposes <coughs> with the institutions that have been established and put in place, the, the, the will of the institution will override you. Because the institution should protect the citizens. And these are areas that we should begin to look at how to develop and evolve strong institutions for the Nigerian state. The Nigerian state can only thrive where you have strong institutions. Mm -hmm. That is why we have, the lack of it, is why we have a very rich archive of too many ideas, recommendations of conferences, recommendation reports, and the rest of them. We have too many archives. That they don't even implement. Yes, that's, that's because the institutions are not strong enough. So a man comes on board and says what he believes and chooses what he likes and what he doesn't like and says, I will not implement this. I don't like that because it's all about what he likes. But Nigeria must come to a point where it goes beyond the individual likes and dislikes. But what the institution has traditionally put in place in the best interest of the citizens. So we'll begin to interrogate each of them vis-a-vis -vis these documents and know where they stand. Because if there is a need today, it's how our institutions can be strengthened. So that a Mr. B who runs his business in Transamadi Port Harcourt will not be afraid of who is governor or who is president as to worry that they may come up with a policy to destroy his business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has the institution protecting yes. him. Mm -hmm. In developed societies, citizenship contributions and citizenship engagements are not protected by governments of, as to who is in power, but the institutions of states. How do we build our institutions? That is the only way every Nigerian can enjoy the desired economic liberty they deserve and expect. And that will affect the rule of law. That will affect the, the justice system. Because our justice system is another sector we should be looking at in the coming dispensations. What practicable reforms can we begin to put in place? Take, for instance, the CJN, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, is both chairman of NJC and Supreme and the, and the, and the, uh, uh, the, the Chief Justice, Justice of, Nigeria. of Nigeria. He has powers to dismiss and discipline judges, but nobody can discipline him. Okay. His office is such that it goes against the, 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 the fundamental principle of, of, uh, of uh, uh, equity, equity that says a man cannot be a judge in his own case. In our own case in Nigeria, our chief justices of Nigeria are judges in their own cases. Nobody can discipline them. Nobody can call them to order. So they, they function and perpetrate their activities without, with, 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 with disregard, mm. you know, with, with, without recourse okay. or submission to any higher authority. So we are, we are seeking... Who will, uh, who will implement a bill or who will, who will forward a bill and which legislature will support a bill separating the office of the CJN from the office of the chairman of the NJC so that a CJN can be cautioned and called to book should he err in any way. All right, uh, we have a few minutes to go. Let me just take one or two uh, tweets here. Uh, I have this one. Uh, yes, uh, this is coming from Endurance uh, Etina Media, sorry <laughs> your name, is saying please forget about all these candidates, the races between two political parties, let's interrogate <laughs> them uh, with the available so time <laughs> and uh, <laughs> nice uh, another one is, is thinking that um, the document according to what he is saying okay. here, okay. I have um, it's, it's, it's this one coming yeah. from Ajide or Liam, he said there's no way people uh, who take other people's advice will not uh, to us. So the, the Nigerians should learn to, I mean, the candidates should learn to watch Nigerians and take what the electorate want. Now, we have just a minute to go. Moving forward, I would like you us to share this one minute here. Conducive environment. Conducive environment, uh, I, I want to appeal uh, as, as we go into the heat of the campaign. It has started, but please, let's be peaceful. I like what the president said in his next level document. Peace we must not be counting bodies mm. arising from campaigns. It's marketing of ideas. Right. That should be the primus interpret the, the, the focus of this campaign. Two it is be the tour guide. 
about inter uh, uh, you have three arms of government yes what many of Respecting the candidates are not them. telling us is how they want to work with other institutions, institutions. and other arms and other levels because a buari cannot be a tree in a forest and think it will achieve everything we have seen what has happened under this administration. The first two relationship between the National Assembly, Assembly and, and the, the presidency. So we must also try and ask them, how do you intend to work with other arms of government and other levels of government, other tiers of government, as in between the federal, state, and local, so like, like the issue of a special a social intervention program. It's supposed to be state and federal, you know, for instance, homegrown school feeding school program feeding. is supposed to be primary one to three by federal government, mm. th uh, four to six state government. Uh, is any state government doing that? Okay. So, so these are inter interstate and inter arms, you know, relationship. Okay. How do they want to work together to achieve whatever they have promised us? All right, because so. a tree, they cannot be working in silos and believe that they will make the de de desirable change. Ayobami, in just 10 seconds. Well, I, like, I, I agree. I take something from what he said, and I've always told young people, too, who ha have candidates and care about it, that look, no matter how well-intentioned your president is, if you have bad people in the National Assembly, you will always have a problem. Because on the long run, no matter how good his plans are, if they decide to frustrate his plan, okay, look at this current budget. When you look at the budget, it was supposed to address a lot of issues. But what happened? It was delayed for a long time. And by the time they passed it, now it was time to now take some of the borrowings that will have be, uh, gone into the uh, infrastructure, infrastructure development. development. They decided to go on recess for almost three months. All right. So they can't even borrow money to do the job they needed to do. So when you have a National Assembly that is playing on its own different level, yeah. away from what the executive is doing, no matter how good you are, you will have a problem. So Nigerians must not only look at the document of the candidates, we must look at the kind of human beings who are going to be voting into the various not, uh, legislature, both states, federal, yeah, no, exactly. the, 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 the national, the, the, the national houses, assemblies. Okay. they have given Nigerians too much problem. They right. have been fighting personal battles. Okay, look at an instance. We, we, we don't have, for, for we instance, have limited an election time. Already place, running out. Some election took place recently, last Saturday. Why is the National Assembly making it an issue for themselves? So the National Assembly has decided to play uh, on its own, and it is not to the benefit of them. All right, I so we me. must watch those Th areas. Thank you. Livingstone, we have one word, so yeah, we go. We're already out word. of time. We have a chance to make Niger either Nigeria a casualty in the next election, or we make injustice the casualty. We should choose to between killing Nigeria or killing injustice okay. in this land. All right, thank you very much for being a part of the program. Uh, this is where we say good night on this program. Remember, you join us tomorrow at 10 p.m. We will be looking at the essence of a debate. Should they participate in debate or the candidates? That's where we'll take our focus to tomorrow. Until then, join me on my Twitter handle. Follow me on at EJ or Good night.